Email is a very important process in communication because with emails you can share documents, you can share text, you can share ideas. It's way less intrusive than making a phone call. Uh, you know, when, you, when you've got clients that call you and you're on a job site or you're in the middle of something and they, they need an answer, that's why they're reaching out, but it could have been something you could have easily responded to in a quick email. It's less intrusive. Uh, but then there are times when email is the most important form of communication. It's the best way to communicate, especially when you can share attachments and, and documentation and pictures, etc. Um, it, it's hard to explain just a quick answer as far as when is the best time to email versus text versus IM versus a phone call versus actually sending a physical letter on your letterhead. Uh, it, it's hard to explain in a, in a three minute video when is the best time to do what, but we're gonna break that down in this course. This course is a hundred parts. So we're gonna break it down and, and make each little individual point its own subject. Email, you know, the way you email, what you include in the email, how you write your subject line, what's attached, uh, if you've got links to, to different, you know, Better Business Bureau, Angie's List, Craigslist, uh, if you have pictures, of, if you're certified by this or registered by that. Um, one of the best examples I can give you, I actually had a client lose a contract years ago because the background of her email was a faded out picture of her kids. It was really cool looking. And it was a very respectable picture, and her kids were smiling, and it was beautiful. But depending on who you're emailing it to, every email account it receives emails and handles emails differently. I'm sure you've gotten emails where there were attachments versus emails from other people where those, those documents weren't attached. They were actually in the body of the email. Unfortunately for her, these pictures of her kids, which was in the background, and you know what I'm talking about. You've seen emails with colored backgrounds or patterned backgrounds, and they look pretty. But some email services will take that and make it an attachment, and it could look like a virus, and they may block it. So that picture of your kids in the background gets your email blocked by your recipient. They never received your email because of that picture. So it's very important that you format your email properly for the, the recipient. Uh, if they're getting in, if you're sending it to a Yahoo, it's going to look different than if you're sending it to a Gmail versus you're sending it to an AOL versus you're sending it to a MyMail. Uh, each email service has its own process as far as how they receive emails and what they automatically put into the spam, what they automatically attach or don't. So if I'm communicating with a client who's already on board and I send them an email, the subject line usually has the question. I say thanks. And the body, again, will have the question, and then it has my name and my phone number. That's it. I don't need my website address or my email address in the body because they already know how to reach out to me. They already know my website. They're already a client. I don't need five attachments. I don't need the Better Business Bureau link. I don't need any of that stuff if they're already a client. I'm not trying to sell them. So the email should be pertinent to the type of communication. And this is really important. If you have multiple email accounts, I'll give you a golden nugget right here. This is one of our golden nuggets. Send yourself an email from each account to each account and see how different that email looks on each service. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I send test emails all the time, especially if I'm yeah. dealing with a client who's not using a phonetical alphabet. They're not using the military alphabet. So they're trying to tell me, yeah, it's P like tall and Tim like Bill and C like cat. And okay, let me see if I got this correct. And I'll send them a quick, let me send you a quick test email, make sure you get it. And then once they get it, it'll typically put me on their preferred recipients list or at least allow it to go in the inbox. So now I know when I send the second email and there's attachments, it's not going to get blocked. If someone reaches out to me and says, hey, I want more information, then I'm going to send them an email with attachments and information. But if I'm already dealing with a client who's on board and I just have a quick question, I'm going to put the question in the subject line. I'm going to say thanks. A lot of times I'll say please because uh, respect is, is far and few these days. And the subject line is the question and the body is the question and then my name and my phone number. That's it because I don't need any of this other stuff that could get my email blocked. Now, one thing that drives me crazy is when people try and simplify it even more and they don't put their phone number in the email because they're worried, well, robots find my phone number and the robots will put me on a dialing list and then I get more phone calls. It doesn't really work that way and unless, you're, unless you've been hacked, in which case if you're hacked, you're 
pretty much screwed anyway. Uh, when you don't put your phone number in the email, if you email me and ask me a question and say, hey, give me a call, and you don't put your phone number in the email, I have to look you up in the CRM. I have to find the right number. You could have a home number, a cell number, an office number. I got to call all three of them. No. If you have a quick question, hey, give me a call. Phone number, name, that's it. And that one drives me crazy because people do that all the time and then they don't have their phone number in the email. One thing you will notice from me, no matter what the communication is, there's always my name and always my phone number in case they want to call me. They've got the number right there. It's convenient. Also, if you have to send a, a large message in an email, don't make it one paragraph. Jeez, don't make it one paragraph. Break it into simple sentences and it's simple, small paragraphs. When I get an email and it's one giant, I'm not reading it. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, I'm just going to call you because I don't have time for it. And you got to understand, email is not made for extensive communication. Email is really made for simple communication. And miscommunication, you know, the reason why we're having this entire training course, communication breakdown, because communication is the biggest problem in business. And sending a huge message through an email just gives too many opportunities for them to misunderstand the message.